Okay, and here we go. Uh, my name is Robert Poole, and today in this video, I'm going to talk about how we use scripts and how we use words, more importantly, in scripts to get the result we're looking for, whether that's in a cold call, whether you're talking to somebody and, and trying to sell them on something. Words do matter, as we all know. You know, if you think about it, uh, for instance, so uh, what's the difference here? You know, Johnny bit the dog. And where do the same words reversed? The dog bit Johnny. Let's spell that right. Same words, different order. So not only do words matter, but also the order matters. You know, if you think about the power of words, uh, you know, you think about history and some of the people that have moved us and started huge movements, somebody like Martin Luther King, and, you know, it wasn't uh, anything he did. Uh, he didn't have the Internet at the time. All he had was his words and his emotion and how he used those words. And he started a whole movement which changed the trajectory of our country forever. You know, and then you look at a negative example, somebody like Hitler, uh, that was able to get other human beings to do unspeakable things. And it wasn't because he was so good looking, you know, with that great mustache and everything. It was because he knew how to use words uh, to trigger emotions in people to get them to act on things. And so words are so important in how we use them and the order we use them. Um, you know, and so in this video, we're going to talk about um, how we use and how we integrate those ideas into when we're writing scripts, um, you know, for cold calling or in a sales conversation. Um, you know, and a, as a side note, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine, and I, I talked about this, and there's a whole other video on actually writing a cold call script, but, you know, over the years, um, you know, people will say, well, you know, I, I don't like using scripts, you know, like, I can't use a script, you know, and, you know, uh, I got news for you, you already do. I mean, think about it. When somebody asks you, you know, just casually today, you know, hey, how's it going? Or how are you today? What do you say? You say, oh, good. How are you? Or um, great. Uh, you know, what's new with you? Or whatever. You have a pat answer. You have your, your go to phrase that you say because and that's a script in your head. And we do that when somebody asks us different questions because our brains need something that they can rely on. We can't make something up new every time. It's just too exhausting for our brains. So we all use scripts, and we use scripts even in sales presentations, and you may not even realize it, but you say the same thing, the same phrases, if you've been doing sales for any period of time, the same type of thing. If you're selling the same thing for more than a few presentations, I guarantee you're using the same phrases and the same words. Maybe not in the right order, but you're using the same thing over and over again. So the question really, though, is are those words intentional? Have you thought about them in advance? Have you planned those? to elicit the emotion that you want. And what is sales all about? Sales is all about you know, get, getting the other person to believe that whatever we're offering them is much more valuable to them than the money in their pocket. And at that point, they almost have no choice. They have to buy from us, which is the holy grail in selling. And one way we do that you know, is through the use of words, the order of the words, and the words and phrases that evoke emotions. Um, you know, so the bottom line is professionals use scripts, you know. If you talk to any speaker, you know, um, a motivational speaker, Tony Robbins, you know, Zig Ziglar, any of those guys, I can, you can guarantee if you listen to them more than a couple of times, you realize that they use the same stuff over and over and over again. Uh, and it's because they're professionals. They know they've thought about it in advance and they've memorized it. So, you know, I've had salespeople tell me over the years, you know, and I've hired hundreds of salespeople and you know, people say, well, I can't use scripts because, you know, every conversation is different. Well, you know, that's true. But we're not saying that you have to have a rote script that from start to beginning, A to Z, you just read it to the person or, or spit it out to them. But you do need to have sections, you know, a paragraph, a, you know, a, a answer to a question, a, um, a segment that you can sort of dance with the script, if you will, depending on how the conversation goes. I mean, you obviously have to start with something. But as the conversation flows, you need to bounce around, but you need to have pre-canned sections that you can kind of plug in there as they make sense uh, in the conversation. That's how you use a script. Um, and again, you know, there's a whole other video on actually writing a script, but I wanted to give you uh, today some philosophy behind how we use words in scripts and how important they are. Um, and uh, so, you know, you think about it, um, there's things like, if I, t if I ask you or tell you, you know, your favorite color is blue, and so what's your response? You're, you're in your head, you're thinking, well, no, it isn't. It's red or it's purple or, hey, how do you know it was blue? Uh, and then, so what's the difference between that and me saying, what's your favorite color? 
immediately you go right to whatever your favorite color is in your head. You answer the question. Uh, and again, it's because I made a statement or I made a question. And again, that's using words to evoke a certain emotion or a certain response that we're trying to get. So if we know the response we're trying to get, it's much easier to tailor that script uh, and those words to elicit that response. Um, you know, things like, um, I mean, if you think about questioning, um, when somebody tells you something, you know, hey, this is a fact or whatever, and it's a fact that maybe you don't believe, immediately your defenses go up. But if somebody asks you a question that maybe subtly um, sort of challenges that belief of yours, they ask you a question, or even better, they use a story to ask that question that's integrated in there, some uh, third party is asking that question, you know, suddenly it's not directed straight at you. And so it's not uh, your defenses don't go up right away. So if we want to keep our prospects from, you know, suddenly becoming defensive, then we want to make sure that we use questions and we use stories in what we're doing. And again, I've done whole videos on the, the power of using stories and that whole HSC process. So you really want to check that out. Um, and, uh, you know, it all comes down to... <laughs> You know, humans, uh, we're, we're self-interested in, we love to think about things that are our ideas. So if, you know, if we, if somebody questions something, it makes us think about a belief of ours. And then sometimes if they can shift that belief, then internally we think, oh, that was my idea because I switched the belief when we didn't even realize that it was because of the words and the emotions that were evoked uh, or invoked by the other person and the influence on us, which is what sales is all about. It's about influence, it's not about convincing somebody. It's letting somebody convince themselves. Um, so, and these are not any really in a particular order, but I was thinking about some of the things that uh, are so important when you uh, look at the philosophy of writing a script and how you use those words. So I'm gonna go through these um, and kind of, and again, they're not in any particular order, but just some things that I've seen over the years that, uh, that really make a difference, you know. Um, it, the, you know. The first thing, you know, we need target words with, that have emotion, you know, and that sounds, obvious, but, you know, a lot of times people come up with uh, scripts and, and things and they use words that are more logical. You should do this because, you know, it makes sense type of phrases, you know, whereas, you know, what we want to do is you want to do this because it'll make you feel X, Y, Z emotion. Um, it's going to make you feel, um, you know, you're not using the word feel necessarily, but you're saying this is going to give you the security that you're looking for, you know. You're getting across things that um, that uh, are emotions at somebody because what do people buy by emotion? They don't buy by logic. They they first get emotionally excited about something, they want to buy it, but and then they use logic after the fact a lot of times or when we're trying to get them over that hump to actually make a decision, that's when they use logic. So we've got to hit them with emotions first. So we've got to use words that move them emotionally, whether that's uh, scare them, you know, because they're gonna miss out on something or the consequences if they don't take action uh, by using this new solution um, or how they're gonna feel afterwards and how great it will be. Uh, all those things, and so you wanna use words that evoke that emotion and focus on the emotions first. Then you can put you know logic back in there instead of doing the reverse, which is what a lot of salespeople do. Um, you know, another one that you'll see, the butt word, and I'm not talking about our rear end. If you think about it, what do you say? Um, I really like you, but, you know, um, I can't date you right now. So what does somebody hear when you say that to them? Do they say, hear, I really like you? Or do they hear, I can't date you? They hear, I can't date you because what you just did, but is a negating word, meaning it negates everything that came before it. So, you know, but we can actually use it. And unfortunately, a lot of people use it in the wrong way because they negate what they're trying to get done um, instead of the other way around. So if we use it and say something, you know, to the effect of, you know, um, I don't know if this is for you, but, you know, X, Y, Z, that suddenly says to them, negate the, I don't know if it's for you part, but this thing is for you. Uh, it's a psychological way of getting their brain to pay attention to the second part of the sentence, not the first, and to focus on that. So. The word but is actually very powerful if it's used correctly. Um, you know, and in general, you know, when we're, when we're using words, we want to paint a picture. So, you know, as I've talked about some other videos, particularly in story, 
you know, when we're selling something, we've got to create an experience for people. Um, we've got to help because our brains think in terms of pictures and movies. Um, you know, if you think about anything in your past, it's primarily pictures. Uh, when somebody's describing somebody, you're creating a picture in your head. Um, we're just, that's just the way we're built. That's the way our brains work. And so if we want to paint a picture in somebody's head, we've got to use the right words that are going to paint the right picture because somebody may come in with a preconceived notion of what it looks like to use your product or service, how that is, and they've got a perception of that, and it's largely in pictures. So what we need to do is help them to create different pictures, uh, the pictures that are friendly to our product or service where they can see themselves using it. You know, again, story is a big part of that. So using words that, that paint a picture that help them imagine what it would be like and all the benefits they're going to get and all the feelings that they're going to get by using our product or service. And, you know, uh, another powerful thing is, again, how we phrase things. You know, if you want to eliminate future objections in a conversation, you know, uh, you may end your presentation and say, okay, what questions do you have? Uh, you know, because what a lot of people do, they say, well, do you have any questions? And so, you know, what's the difference between the two? When you say, what questions do you have? The person's going to struggle and go, um, well, um, you know, it's uh, maybe a little, acts about, you know, they ask one thing or they ask two things. Uh, and then they shut up because they can't think of anything else. Um, and that basically says the conversation is over. That's all they've got. Versus, you know, if uh, we ask them, hey, do you have any questions? Then they're sitting there going, well, you know, and they're going on and on and on and trying to find, come up with new questions. Whereas if they're put on the spot to spit those questions out there quickly by what questions you have, that's an assumption that they have questions. Um, it, it, it sets a completely different tone. And then that also goes with consistency because later in the conversation, you know, we, we say we can use that and say, well, you know, you had a question about this and you had a question about this and we've solved that. Therefore, that's all the questions and make a decision. Uh, so it's not doesn't give them an out, so to speak, where if we leave that open ended, you know, with what questions, you know, or, you know, do you have any questions? They're going to continue to leave that open loop and those open questions throughout the conversation. Um, you know, you think about it, um, another phrase um, that I like to use is, you know, don't worry. Because, you know, everybody in a uh, sales situation, you know, when particularly when you're getting to the uh, close stage and, and you know, people are getting nervous, but, you know, because it's natural because they know what's coming. You know, if you can um, assure them that they can, they can relax, that they're not going to be pressured and all that kind of stuff, then you have a much better chance of getting through them and being able to tell the right story that's going to help shift their beliefs like we talked about before. So, you know, a phrase like, don't worry. And, you know, it's a, don't worry, you know, um, I'm going to tell you all about this, you know, and we're going to answer all your questions and you're under no obligation, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it, it really puts people's defenses and allows them to go, okay, you know, I can listen to this person, you know. Um, you know, um, you know, one of the things I like to say is, hey, you know, um, I know you don't know me from Adam, but X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, and what does that do that says, hey, I realize that I'm a stranger, uh, but in a weird sense, it also makes you a friend by being honest in what they're already thinking. We all know when the other person is thinking this, I don't know this person at all. And to admit that. And to be honest with somebody immediately creates that rapport, creates, creates that trust. So don't worry, you know, I don't, I understand that uh, you don't know me from Adam, is admitting that and putting that out in there, the elephant in the room, if you will. Um, you know, you can also, I'm going to run out of room here. Erase this real quick. You know, um, you can say things or, or compare uh, and tell them about what other successful people like themselves are doing because, of course, we all want to view ourselves as successful, as open-minded about all those kind of things. So, you know, you might say something like, um, you know, um, our most successful, highest producing clients use this solution. And so what, are the, what does that say that says, hey, if you're a successful, high producing, you know, insurance agent or whatever, that's the, the prospect, um, then you need to use this solution because everybody else who's successful is doing it. So, you know, uh, I'm just going to call this the successful principle. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, 
and this is an old sales thing, but people forget about this. You know, the open-ended question versus the yes, no. When you ask a yes, no question, um, you know, you're getting through a gatekeeper and you say, um, can I please speak to, you know, Mr. Smith or whatever. You're asking and you're, you're allowing them to come up with an immediate no and end of conversation. Um, and it's very difficult to recover from that. Whereas if you call somebody and you say, um, uh, let me talk to Mr. Smith, you know, please, you can be curious about it, but it's a command versus a yes, no question. And it goes to the open-ended question versus the yes, no thing. So you want to avoid the, the yes, no stuff. Cross that out. Um, and then, you know, there's the, the last thing that really works well is what I would call micro commitments. And that's things that, you know, if you get them to agree to things throughout the conversation, throughout the script, you're putting in things that, um, hey, you know, we all know that, you know, business is tough right now and that, you know, with inflation or whatever, um, that a lot of companies are struggling and they're going to go, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and you can say, well, you know, I mean, you're a successful business person, right? And that, that it, even if they're not actually verbally answering, they're going, well, yeah, of course I am. And so they're mentally committing to little tiny things. And those add up over time and allows them to be positive and actually makes it easier for them to say yes as those start to uh, get on top of each other, as they start to pile up over time in the conversation. So, you know, so these are just some, some basic guidelines, you know, as you're writing that script, like I talked about in the other video, these are the kind of things that you want to think about and how you actually use your words because words do matter. And if you start doing these, you start thinking about it and start putting in the effort to use the right words, use them in the right order, use them that are there to invoke that certain emotion. You're going to be really surprised and surprised pleasantly how much of a difference that can make in your sales. So I hope this was helpful. Um, please uh, subscribe to the channel and um, rate and, and comment, do all that uh, YouTube stuff, uh, share it with your friends. And uh, I will talk to you in the next video.